Hello, my smart and talented friends, and welcome to the Global Science Network. Today, I am going to show you how to build a master-slave JK flip-flop and a master-slave data flip-flop. As you probably know, we are working on building a 4-bit computer using individual transistors, and then we are going to build artificial neurons as we work our way towards creating non-biological human consciousness. Let's get to it. In the last video, I showed you how to build this JK flip-flop and how to build a data flip-flop. Right now, we have the output coming from the clock into the trigger, and then from the trigger into the clock input of this JK flip-flop. If we press set, our output will turn on, and if we press reset, our output will turn off. If we press J and K, our output will toggle back and forth. And this is a perfectly valid way to build a JK flip-flop. This is called an edge-triggered JK flip-flop. And what that means is that Whenever this trigger goes into the clock input, it's actually a very short 500 nanosecond pulse. So that is called an edge triggered JK flip-flop. And today we're going to be looking at how to build a level triggered JK flip-flop. Here is the master slave JK flip-flop and the output of the clock is going directly into the clock input. There is no trigger. And what this means is that this is a level triggered device rather than an edge triggered device and we can test to see if it works. We can press set or J and our output will turn on and we can press reset or K and our output turns off. We can also press J and K and our output will toggle back and forth. Now let's talk about how this circuit is built. We have four NAND gates right here, which are basically set up like the JK flip-flop that we were just looking at. And then we have four more NAND gates right here, which are set up like a second JK flip-flop. These four NAND gates here are considered the master, and then these four NAND gates right here are considered the slave. That's why it's called a master-slave JK flip-flop. Notice that the clock input going into the master is just the regular clock input, and then we have an inverter here, so the clock input going into the slave is the inverted clock input. And this is actually really important because our master will turn on and off at the rising edge of a clock signal, and our slave will turn on and off at the falling edge of our clock signal. These four circuit diagrams here are really going to help show how this master-slave JK flip-flop works. So you'll notice that there's a set and a reset phase. So during the set phase, the clock will go high, and then the clock will go low, and during the reset phase, the clock will go high, and then the clock will go low, and then we're back up to the set phase where the clock goes high again. When the wire is red, that means it is on, and whenever the wire is black, that means it is off. And notice that the J and the K inputs for all of the circuits are on. And this means that the circuit is in the toggle state. And this means that every single time the clock goes from high to low, the circuit is going to change states. Let's look at what happens during the set phase. So the clock goes high. And you'll notice that all three inputs to this top NAND gate are on, so the output is going to be off. The bottom NAND gate has two inputs on and one off, so the output is going to be on. We have both of these inputs here are on, so the output here is going to be off. For this top NAND gate here, both inputs are off, so the output is going to be on. And this is actually a really important point in the circuit to note the value. So this is actually the output of the master portion of the circuit. And right now it is on. And previously, right down here, it was off. So whenever the clock turn went high, we actually have the master portion of the circuit switch from being off to being on. Whenever this clock goes high, it is going to make it so that this inverted output right here turns off. And this is going to make it so that this NAND gate right here actually changes values from being off to being on. But this isn't actually going to change the output of the circuit. So our circuit was off and it is still going to be off. However, now whenever the clock goes low, this is going to change. Now if you look at this top NAND gate, this input is off, which is going to make this output right here turn on. The bottom NAND gate is going to stay on and the output value for the entire master circuit actually isn't going to change. It was high, and now it is still going to be high. But the output of the total circuit is going to change, mostly because whenever the clock goes low here, this inverted output goes from being off to being turned on. Now that this output is on, 
both of these inputs are on, which means that this top NAND gate is going to be off. Since this turns off, previously both inputs were on so it was off. Well now, since one of the inputs is off, it's going to turn this output on. And since both of the inputs going into this NAND gate are on, it's going to set this output to off. So whenever the clock goes low, our output changes from being off to being on. And now the next time the clock goes high, we're going to be in the reset phase. So if we look here, the clock goes high, and this makes it so all three inputs to the bottom NAND gate now are on, which makes this output off. And for the top NAND gate, only two of them are on, so the output of this NAND gate is going to be on. Since both inputs into the top NAND gate are on, the output is off. So now the output of our master finally changed states. It was on here, it was on here, and now it is off. Since this one is off, both of these inputs are off, and this output is going to be on. For the slave portion of the circuit, both of these inputs are off, which is going to change this part of the circuit right here going from off to being on, but that isn't actually going to change the value of the output, because if one of these is on or if both of these are off, it's going to have the same value. So whenever the clock went high, the only thing that changed is our master portion went from being turned on to being turned off. Now whenever the clock goes low, this input right here is off, which is actually going to make it so that this NAND gate right here turns on. However, that's not actually going to change the output of the master portion of this circuit. We can see that it was off and on. Now it's, it's still off and on. What's really going to make the circuit change value is now our inverted output, which was previously off, is now on. And since both of these inputs are on, this is going to turn off. And since this is off and it was previously on, now this NAND gate right here, output is going to be on. So our complement output is on, and since both inputs going into this NAND gate are on, our regular output is going to be off. So whenever the clock went low, our output went from being on to being off. Now that our output is off, the next time our clock goes high, we are going to be in the set portion of the circuit. And this is just going to repeat itself over and over again as long as J and K are both on and we continue to receive a clock input. So this circuit is a level triggered JK flip-flop, but it's also important to note that the output changes at the falling edge of the clock signal and not the rising edge of the clock signal. And this can be important whenever you're actually trying to change the values of the circuit at specific times in the clock cycle. This diagram here shows the output of the clock, the output of the master portion of the circuit, and then the output of the slave portion of the circuit, which is also the output of the entire circuit. Our clock signal here is a nice square wave, and we can see here we have a falling edge and then a rising edge, falling edge, rising edge, falling edge, rising edge. The output of the master portion of the circuit switches on the rising edge of the clock signal. So we can see the output is low until it hits a rising edge of the clock and then its value goes high. It stays high until the next rising edge or it will then go low. It stays low until it hits the next rising edge and then it goes high. And then this process just keeps getting repeated over and over again. For the slave portion of the circuit, it changes values on the falling edge of the clock. So we can see here it was low, and then it goes high on the falling edge of the clock, and then it stays high until the next falling edge where it will go low, and then it stays low until the next falling edge of the clock where it will then go high. So it's just important to note that anytime you're using a master-slave JK flip-flop, realize that the output is definitely going to be changing on the falling edge of the clock. Now we are going to look at these outputs on the oscilloscope. We have channel one hooked up to the clock output and channel two hooked up to the output of the master portion of the circuit. The yellow square wave is the clock output and then the purple square wave is the output of the master portion of the circuit. So we can see that whenever the clock goes high, the master goes high, and then the next time the clock goes high, the master goes low, and then the next time the clock goes high, the master goes high, and it just repeats. So this is exactly what we expected. Channel one is still hooked up to the output of the clock, but now we have channel two hooked up to the output of the entire circuit.
So this is the output of the entire circuit, and it's also the output of the slave portion of the master slave JK flip-flop. Now we can see that the output of the entire circuit, which is the purple waveform, is changing at the falling edge. So we have a falling edge, and now the output goes high. We have another falling edge, and the output goes low. Another falling edge, and the output goes high, and it repeats. So again, this is exactly what we expected. Right here, we have a master-slave data flip-flop. And here, you can see the circuit diagram for it. It is built very similar to the JK flip-flop that we were just looking at, where these four NAND gates right here are the master portion of the circuit, and these four right here are the slave portion of the circuit. You can see that the output of the clock goes directly into the clock input. There is not a trigger, so this is a level triggered device. We can test it to see if it is working properly. Whenever we press the data button, our output will turn on, and whenever we release the data button, our output will turn off. Again, whenever we press the button, our output turns on. Whenever we release the button, our output turns off. I'm not gonna go through exactly how all of these logic gates change value, based on the clock and based on the data input because it is so similar to the JK flip-flop that we just looked at. But the main thing to notice is that rather than having a three input NAND gate here and here, we only have a two input NAND gate here and here. So rather than having a set and a reset pin like we did for the JK flip-flop, now we just have one data input. And whenever we press the data input, it will change the value of our output. Sometimes it will be better to use the master slave JK flip-flop and sometimes it's going to be better to use this data flip-flop. Just in case you wanted a close-up view, right here we have the master slave JK flip-flop and then right here we have the master slave data flip-flop. And then of course right here is our A-stable multivibrator which we are using as our clock. Click right here if you want to see another project that used this circuit.